DSP uh, Vitalist Aya, uh, his Chief Public Relations Officer, Ghana Prison Service. Good morning, sir. Thank Good you morning. very much. Uh, and Jonathan Osei Wusu is Executive Director, Paws Foundation. Uh, and Paws Foundation, because you've got something to do with the courts in the prisons. Can you just quickly explain that? Uh, you know, <clears throat> the remand prisoner issue has become a very big issue and we need to address it. Uh, whilst addressing and we're proposing reforms within the, 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 the sectors that borders on remand prisoners, we are also trying to set up uh, special courts within the, uh, the, the prisons to sit on their matter mm. and then see if we can release some of them. It okay. will interest you to know that some of them have been there because of stealing something or causing harm. These are billable offense for Christ's sake. So why will a, a, a judge put somebody behind uh, uh, or uh, uh, to prison because of uh, a billable offense or mm. for stealing? I mm. mean, these are some of the things we are looking at, but we are serious, seriously working with the judiciary, the AG, mm. and then prison. But this thing that you're going to be doing in the prisons, couldn't it be done in the normal courtrooms that we have? You know, yes. The courtrooms are choked. There are cases that are going on all right. But whilst they are waiting for trial, we see that some of these may be anomalies. Under normal circumstances, that normal court setting shouldn't have remanded a case that should be billable or should grant bail to the person and has refused to grant bail. In that case, we need to find out what went wrong. But find out what went wrong. We can't allow the person to be inside the prisons. Mm. We need to find a program that we, will be rolled out to enable these people to come out whilst we deal with the matter. Okay. Do you know if it's the, these same judges who are going to be sitting on, on the cases when you go to, when, when it has been had now in the, in the prisons, in the prison yard? That I wouldn't be able to tell because what happens is that there is a team, a group from there. IG's department, the police service, then the Ghana prison service, they will come out with a list of prisoners that should benefit from whatever program it is. In mm. fact, they ask us to submit a list based on the criteria they set for us. Okay. If you qualify, they will give that list to you. So who so are you presenting? For us, we just give, if, if they say anybody who, is, who has been in prison for the past, say, three, five years without going to court for, for the case of murder, is qualified to sit in this program, we submit your list. We will mm. name to them. Mm. So who is coming from the Attorney General's department, we have no hand in it. Mm. Whether the person has been sitting on another case there before, or this is the first time, we don't have a hand. Okay. <laughs> I kind of have a little worry here. Uh, when we're done with this, and we're able to free those who will be freed, uh, properly sentence those who deserve to be, would, how would we be preventing a recurrence of this? That, th th mm -hmm. that is the process... We uh, that is ongoing. You know, we have two things to deal with under this project. And uh, if you permit me, the project yeah, is funded right. by Star Ghana. And then the two main objectives of the overall objective is one, to reduce the remand population, which we are going to set up the courts together with judicial service, the prisons, and then get that one done. And the second one is to see to proposed reforms that will be agreed upon by the remand prisoners task force. And yesterday the task force met together with our task all of force us. is made up of it's made up of the judiciary uh ages department and when we talk about judiciary ages ages department we are not talking about representatives who don't matter these are people who matters and then the prisons as well as the police these are the four uh, do i say sectors that contribute to the roman prisoner issues but the point is what sort of legal framework is there to ensure that recommendations are not just recommendations that you either take or leave, but you know it becomes you something that you, you can't know, do the, away the with. You know, the reforms we are talking about, some could be administrative. And to interest you, the kind of consensus that the task force is building around this issue. And so when some are administrative, then we have to make sure that the administrative reforms take place. If they are legislative, what we are trying to do is that at the end of the day, we will propose the legislative amendments or changes that we want to Parliament, the, the, the Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, to look at at least that will start the dialogue. Because you can be a man prisoner in, the, in, in, in no time. I, could, I can be one. So we are thinking about the plight of those who are there and to stop 
you getting there, me getting there, uh, just because somebody is not happy with you and want to teach you a lesson. All these things happen. And so when you go down there, you see several stories. Mm. And you, you get so much shocked why people are sent there mm. for no fault of theirs. Okay. So DSP, uh, if you're put into a prison cell, can the, that particular police station decide that we don't have room, so we're sending you to in someone, for instance, because I think I've had cases like that. Now, if It depends on what the court says. If the court says you are remanded into prison custody, you'll be brought to a prison custody. But they can remand to police custody as well. Okay. Yeah. So if anybody... But what if there's no space? Are the police... Well, the, poli the policemen, they are there in the courts. And the judges know where the space is. It depends. If your case is to be heard like tomorrow again, they can ask you to go to police custody and appear in court the following day. Mm. If it is a normal two-week adjournment, 14 days, they'll send you to prison custody. When your time is due, the police will come for you again for courts. Okay. I think one of the things that I heard that really saddened me was the fact that these prisoners are on one city ATP mm -hmm. a day, and this is supposed to give them a proper meal for the whole day. How do you do it? How do you manage it? Because I'm thinking one city 80 pesos cannot buy me cocoa king. I was a cocoa. <laughs> that is true. But that is what Ghanaians have decided to give to prisoners because they are prisoners. Ghanaians decide what you give to students. How did Ghanaian, Ghanaians decide that? How did we all decide <laughs> that one city 80 pesos? Well, the prison service is a public service. And then decisions are taken based on priorities and exigencies. I might not be telling the truth, but the public sometimes thinks that those in prison don't matter. That's a fact. They think everybody in prison is a criminal and should suffer from And they deserve to be there. They deserve to be there. Mm. So when it comes to issues of their welfare, people are dragging their feet. Okay. What I'm interested in right now mm -hmm. is for you to tell me what you give them with a one city 80 pesos. <laughs> what the one city 80 pesos can buy is what we give them. So we give them cocoa, we give them banku, we give them rice, you f do you feed them three times a day? Yes, we do. So that's, that's the magic we are performing. And it's not easy. I, I remember I was in a, on a tour with the minister. And the prisoner jokingly said he had forgotten the taste of sugar. I had that. <laughs> and he had forgotten had the taste that. of meat. Yes, but with once in 80 pesos for an adult meal, for three square meals, I don't think the prisoner was wrong. No, but once in 80 pesos, honestly cannot give you a complete breakfast. You won't even believe this was apt by this current administration. It was just 60 pesos some two, three years ago, 60 pesos. It was in 2010 that it was apt to one city 80 pesos. How does that affect you, the prison officers? It affects us so much to the extent that if somebody is not satisfied, somebody is not well fed, it comes back to you, one, they could be sick, two, they could agitate. And three, if you are a mother or a father and your children are not well fed, that is a worry to you. So we keep appealing to people, we keep appealing to relatives, to philanthropic organizations to come to the aid of these inmates. You can donate anything to a prison. Apart from that, we also engage in some sort of farming to get vegetables to supplement what the government has given them. Mm. That is still not sufficient. The, you know, the other, the other thing I thought about yesterday was really this budget that government gives you, does it come on time? <laughs> um, well, not that on time. Because it's as and when there's money. Government gives us the budget. We pick it up. Not all of it. It's part of it. I won't be able to go on the budget too much because I'm not the financial department. Yeah, I get ah. you. You know, just wanted to understand a few yeah. things that's up. Is that... Uh, uh, let me play the devil's advocate here. You see, these are convicted criminals. No, I get you. And, I'm not, and, I'm not and going to... Into, no, can I no, be a lawyer for no, a no, second? No, no, I'm just... The I'm just, merits <laughs> of the... <laughs> I'm saying you are, we are talking about feeding them. Yes. And we are talking about convicted criminals. Look at the amount given to them. And we're also talking about remand prisoners, Good. remember? And now we they are, are all on the 180. Good. So what we are trying to say is that even taking care of the rem, uh, convicted criminals with one city 50 pesos, 80. It's 80, com pesos. 80 pesos is coming at a cost to the state. Mm -hmm. Now we are adding remand prisoners. So at least if you calculate the amount of money that goes in taking care of remand prisoners, 
you will find out then why should uh, why, why will somebody even send them there in the first place mm. it is coming as an extra cost to the state that is why we all have to be serious about this that we need to find solutions to this remand prisoners issue and then end it once and for all if not at all at least to minimize it and then get some reforms to address the issues okay let me stay on the money issue for just a little longer how often is it reviewed every year okay every year. so what would be ideal what would be ideal is what i eat what i you what you eat mm. for breakfast for lunch for supper if you calculate that for they are human beings they are not slaves they are not from planet mars they are from ghana mm. and they are Ghanaians. so if they have offended the law doesn't mean that they should be giving that paltry sum for three mm. square meals a day. No. So what is good for you should be good for the prisoner as well. Okay. Let, let's talk about something that would put a bit of smiles on our faces. Uh, some of them come out really reformed because some of them uh, are in prison, but they write exams and stuff yes. like that. Tell us a bit about those things. So let's not mix up the two. Remands don't write exams in our custody oh, okay. because they are not convict prisoners. Okay. We have so they, they, they are just there? Yeah, their they lives not, have come to a standstill. Because they are not guilty of what mm. we, we That is even so, that's so, so severe, severe. You don't know your fate. So we can't there. classify them. They are just remand prisoners and that's where they should be. They are in there. They will take their food. When it's time for them to go to court, they go. If they are discharged, they don't come back. If they come back, cases are adjourned. Receive them back again. We are talking about um, some reformations in the prisons, yes. We have non-formal and formal educations as well as vocational and training skills we offer the inmates. Mm. As we speak, we presented candidates for the WASI. Oh. And they wrote, usually with 100%, because we have a lot of prisoners who are well-educated, prison officers who are well-educated, trained teachers, professionals handling them. In Sawam, normal presents the highest number of inmates for the WASI. Okay. And North Deck, sometimes MVTI. As we speak today, the boys at uh, the juvenile center at Boston, they just finished their exams last yesterday, day for yesterday. And because we have the resources, somebody is there with a master's. He's condemned to death. What is he supposed to be doing? He offers himself to train his younger brothers who are there, I mean, for free. Mm. That is the magic. So we are just appealing that people who have donations, people who have anything to give to the prisons, come along with it because these people are coming back to society to be a part of us. Yeah. So be the better we train them to be useful citizens, it's good for all of us than thinking that they should be condemned. Mm. Example is, if you look at, I don't have the statistics for now, but since we started presenting them for WASI, we've not had a fail. They've always passed. So they pass and they go back to prison until they're released? Yes, they go back to prison. We have some who have been released and are in other universities. Some are professional somewhere, just like you have pastors and musicians who were through prisons. Mm -hmm. You will not know them. But we are now planning and thinking how we can have a connection with the distance learning centers in UCC and Winneba. Okay. So they can be extended to the prisons. Whilst there, you can get your degree, and if you are out of prison, you can use it. We have another problem there. We do all these things for inmates. But the laws of the country says, if you're an ex-convict, you shouldn't be employed in any government sector or any public service. Mm. So if we don't change that, and we still bring them out, what, do we do? what are we doing to them? Yesterday, I mentioned that most of the laws are absolute. They are old. We need to change them. And you bore with me that until they are changed, yes, we are yeah. doing our best. But somebody comes out with the best of grades, best of skills from the prisons, and they say, oh, this is an ex-convict. You must be on your own. You can't be employed by the any sector. That's also not fair. Yeah, that's true. So when is this uh, courts in the prison started? Uh, uh, before then, let me again recommend uh, some activity being done by uh, the prison service. You know, the remand prisoner issue becomes an issue first because they don't have lawyers. When they are arrested at a point where they are arrested, and when they don't have lawyers and they are remanded to the prisons, what happens? Some of them you can't even trace their parents mm. or rel relatives. Some of them you can't get lawyers for them and so on and so forth. Now the prison service have been able to come up with some reforms and I have paralegals. As prison officers, they have paralegal units, which is somehow new, to guide these people, counsel them, 
open up for lawyers and mm -hmm. look for all these things. So I just want to add that okay. dealing with that remand issue, uh, prisons, at least they have started to picking up some of this reform to okay. keep the practice. All right. So the pra for the court sentence, we starting with Takwadi somewhere in the on the 16th and 17th, we are going to Takwadi and Takwa. 16th and 17th of October. October to Takwadi okay. and Takwa. Okay. And then we go to Kumase the following two weeks. And then we come to Cape Coast. That is Kumase. Sorry, Cape Coast will be Ankafo and Winneba for two weeks, okay. uh, for two days. And then it continues like that. Okay. And I must mention that the Judicial Service and the AGS Department are actively involved in this. And we appreciate their support to uh, 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 keep or look for solutions okay. for this kind of And we wish, you, we wish you the best Thank uh, you in for doing the this. For giving uh, us don't, the don't end there. After Star Ghana, look for other supports and continue. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and thank you again for being here today.